viewers, today we will talk about Pythagoras theorem. Hello viewers, if I ask you a simple question, what a triangle is, what answer you will give? A triangle is a polygon with least number of sides and a triangle is always recognized by its sides. Let us see these triangles. Here this triangle ABC has sides 9 centimeters, 10 centimeters and 13 centimeters. That is the length of all the sides is different. So, such a triangle is called a scalene triangle. In the triangle PQR, we have side PQ equal to side PR, each is 13 centimeters and Q is 10 centimeters. That is these two sides are equal in length. Such a triangle we call as isosceles triangle, but if all the sides of a triangle of equal length like in this L M N each side is 8 centimeters such a triangle is called an equilateral triangle. So, this was one way of differentiating between the different triangles. Can we think of another way where we can uh, where we can say something about the triangle as to what type of triangle is this. Look at these triangles. Here in this triangle, this angle is 120 degrees that is more than 90 degrees. So, triangle PQR is a obtuse angled triangle, but the triangle ABC has angles equal to 65 degrees, 40 degrees and 75 degrees all the angles of this triangle are less than 90. So, such a triangle is known by the name of acute angled triangle. Now, besides this, can we think of a triangle where one angle is 90 degrees? Yes, of course, we can think of a triangle with one angle as 90 degree. So, here is the triangle L, M and N and this angle here is 90 degrees. This triangle is called a right angled triangle and in this one, this triangle is right angled at M. Now, these triangles have always been fascinating for the mathematicians. They had been trying to establish some or the other important aspects about the triangles. Now, one such attempt we are showing you here in this a, B, C, this is right angled at B, this is right angled at B. The length of side B, C is 4 units and over B, C is constructed a square which has been divided into smaller squares. They are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 4 on this side that is the total number of squares in this square are 16. The side A B is of length 3 units and here again we have divided them into smaller squares and the total number of squares in this are 9. On the side A C we have constructed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 squares are here and 5 on this side that makes the total as 25 squares.
So, what do you find in this? That the number of squares constructed on the side A B that is they are 9 in number plus the number of squares constructed on the side B C which are 16 that is equal to the number of squares constructed on the side A C which is 25. We can verify this aspect in another way also. Here again A B C is a right triangle on A B this square is there and on A C we have constructed this square and on B C the square constructed is B C D E. Now, let us put this, this square has been divided into four parts, one part is here. taking this third part and the last one that is fourth part is So, these four parts which have been taken from the square A C G H have been fixed in the square B C D E and this part is still left blank. So, we take out this square So, what do we find? The square on this has been put over here and the four parts from this square have been placed here 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, that means the area of this square plus the area of this square is completing filling the area of square B C D E and now you will be interested in knowing that how did we get these four parts. These four parts are obtained first by getting the mid center of the square which is obtained by joining the diagonals. This is that point and then at this point we draw a line parallel to the hypotenuse that is the side opposite to right angle. So, this line has been drawn parallel to the hypotenuse and drawing another line which is perpendicular to the hypotenuse. So, these four parts were obtained and these four parts along with the square on this have completely fitted into the bigger square that is the square on the hypotenuse. Now, this concept that is the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of squares on the other two sides was given by a Greek mathematician and philosopher known by the name of Pythagoras in the year 550 BC and it is stated as Pythagoras theorem. Now, according to Pythagoras theorem in a right triangle the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum 
of the squares of the other two sides. Now, though the concept of right angle triangle that is the square on hypotenuse is equal to sum of the squares on the other side was given by Pythagoras, but it was very well known to Indians about 200 years before Pythagoras. And we can find mention of these in Bodhain's Sulbha Sutra. Sulbha Sutra means the rule of the court. Here, whenever any sacred ritual was to be performed, that was performed at a particular time and in a particular direction. This led to the study of astronomy and to perform the sacred rituals, altars were prepared, that is, Vedis were prepared where yags were performed. And these Vedis were prepared according to perfect specification, and here we have one such altar with us. Now, if we happen to look at this, this total length G double dash G is 30 units with the midpoint that is this is 15 units. The distance between E and F is 36 units and distance between E and G dash is 39 units. And if we square up 39 that will be equal to the square of 39. is equal to 15 square plus 36 square. So, though the credit for this Pythagoras theorem goes to Pythagoras, but this was known to Indians much earlier than that. Now, if we have three numbers which satisfy this condition that is the square on one number plus the square on other number is equal to the square on the third number, then these numbers are called Pythagorean triples like 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. If we take 1 as 5 units that is 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squares. If we take the number as 8 and the other as 15, 8 squared is 64, 15 square is 225 and 17 square we know is 289. So, that also satisfies this condition. So, these numbers are called Pythagorean triples and any numbers which satisfy this are of the form a square plus b square equals c square. But now the question arises that do we always have to look for the square of numbers and see for this relation? To get the Pythagorean numbers, we will take two numbers a and b, after that we will find out a squared minus b squared, 2 a b and a squared plus b squared. The numbers thus obtained will be satisfying the property of Pythagorean triples. Let us take a as 3 and b as 2. While selecting the numbers a and b, care has to be taken that a has to be greater than b. So, a square minus b square that works out to be 5, 2 a b works out to be 12 and a squared plus b squared 13. Taking a as 5 and b as 3, obviously you can see that 5 is greater than 3, a squared minus b squared works out to be 16, 2 a b 30 and a squared plus b squared 34. If I take a as 10 and b as 8, then a squared minus b squared that is 100 minus 64 will be 36, this will be 160 and a squared plus b squared shall be 164. The numbers thus obtained will all satisfy the Pythagorean triplet property. 
Let us take this triplet 16, 30 and 34 and examine whether they satisfy the property or not. Now, 16 squared is 256, 30 squared is 900 and 34 squared is 1156 and obviously, you find here that 16 squared plus 30 squared is equal to 34 squared. Now, let us read that Pythagoras theorem once again that in a Pythagoras theorem this states in a right triangle the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Now, let us give the proper proof for this. Now, here I have a triangle ABC which is right angled at A and from A I will draw perpendicular onto side BC. Let us name this point as D. Now, considering the triangles A, B, C and D, B, A, we find that angle A is equal to angle D, each being 90 degrees and angle B is equal to angle being B common to both. So, therefore, triangle ABC is similar to triangle D, B and A. So, the triangles are similar that means their corresponding sides must be proportional that is AB upon d b this is equal to b c upon b a. If we cross multiply this we get a b times a b that is a b squared is equal to b c into b d. Now, we will apply the same to the triangle A, B, C and D, A, B, C and in triangles A, B, C and D, A, C and 